Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, all. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Simply an email uh, to subscribe to our mailing list. We'll get you access to that. So a great resource, great refresher if you're uh, taking board exams, going through pharmacology courses, or just looking for that little clinical refresher. So again, reallifepharmacology.com. Sign up for the free top 200 study guide. All right, the drug of the day today is tirzepatide. Brand name of this medication is Monjaro. I have heard it pronounced a few different ways, but I believe that is the correct pronunciation. Uh, this is a newer diabetes agent. So more specifically used for type 2 diabetes. Its classification is uh, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. Uh, that is commonly abbreviated as GIP, G-I-P. And it is a combination with a glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist. So that is GLP-1. So I've talked about GLP-1s extensively in previous podcasts. Uh, semiglutide, liraglutide, I believe I've covered uh, those for sure. Uh, so you can go back and get a little bit more depth with that. Uh, there are quite a few similarities, and as far as the adverse effect profile, which I'll, I'll discuss coming up here, uh, it is very, very similar uh, to uh, the GLP-1s as far as adverse effect profile. So mechanistically, uh, what do these two things do? So ultimately, you're going to end up with inc- increased glucose-dependent insulin release. So thinking about when we eat a meal, insulin release tends to go up, and a drug like tirzepatide is going to help with that. Also reduces inappropriate glucagon secretion, and it also slows the GI tract. Uh, many patients will report feeling more full uh, from a subjective standpoint with a medication like this. And as you can imagine, patients feeling more full, they're potentially going to eat less. And that's where the indication of potential for weight loss is going to come into play. Now, we do not have a formal FDA approval as of yet, as of me creating this podcast, Uh, but there was a recent study done, Tirzepatide, once weekly for the treatment of obesity trial. Uh, If you haven't looked at it, that'll be a good one for you to certainly check out. And I believe that is one of the major ones the FDA is reviewing right now to see if it deserves uh, a weight loss or obesity management indication. Uh, So I suspect that it will get approved for that. At least that's the uh, primary buzz that I have heard. Um, But again, I don't have that uh, final information at the time of making this podcast. So uh, stay tuned to the news for that one. All right, let's talk dosing a little bit. So it's once weekly, sub-Q injection, uh, some of the other GLP-1 agonists or kind of similar uh, to this medication, uh, the GLP-1 agonist, not perfectly similar. Again, that mechanism is slightly different. Uh, 2.5 milligrams is the usual starting dose, and we can titrate every four weeks up by 2.5 milligrams up to a max of 15 milligrams. Now, interestingly, in the study for weight loss, which again is being reviewed, uh, they used similar dosing uh, to diabetes. So again, 2.5 up to um, 15 milligrams. Their primary target doses in that weight loss study weight management study was 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, and 15 milligrams, respectively. All right, 
other information about this. So the FDA, again, I mentioned they have not approved it for weight management. However, the American Diabetes Association in 2023 has uh, had tirzepatide make an appearance in the guidelines. So if you go uh, look this up and our friends uh, pearls.com, P-Y-R-L-S.com, they have a free uh, downloadable PDF on the treatment algorithm. Uh, simply signing up for a free account will get you access to that. So that's on the ADA 2023 guidelines. And tirzepatide is making an appearance under patients where we're targeting weight loss. Okay, So it is classified as having very high efficacy for weight loss. So it's tirzepatide and semaglutide really have the most robust evidence for significant weight loss. So if we're trying to do both, manage diabetes and promote weight loss, tirzepatide and semaglutide have the best evidence. And again, go get that free chart, pearls.com slash RLP. And uh, signing up for an account there, a free account will get you access to that. Uh, great resource just to kind of review what the updates are and, and what the appropriate medications are uh, according to the American Diabetes Association. So again, pearls, P-Y-R-L-S dot com slash RLP, and I'll put it in the show notes there too. Uh, let's talk about missed dosing that can come up in clinical practice. So Again, we're going to give this once weekly, so let's say uh, Sunday is the usual daily dose, or excuse me, the usual weekly dose, and if we miss that dose, and if we're within four days of that time that we give that usual dose, you can have patients go ahead and take it and resume their usual Sunday schedule. If it's more than four days, uh, we're going to just ten, uh, tend to wait for the next scheduled day. So basically, they'll skip a week if it's been more than four days. And half-life of this drug is approximately five days. So if you've got a patient that, for whatever reason, cost or couldn't get access to it or whatever the case may be where we had to interrupt therapy for you know, a few weeks, it's probably a situation where I'm going to recommend restarting at the initial starting dose so we don't end up with a situation where we're maybe more likely to get uh, adverse effects. So with that, let's talk about the adverse effects. So primary thing I'm always looking out for with uh, GLP-1 agonists and now this drug, tirzepatide, it's going to be GI upset, uh, nausea, diarrhea, reduced appetite, which can be a good thing, as we talked about with potential weight loss, uh, vomiting, those are all uh, going to be fall within the category of the most common adverse effects. There is other more rare adverse effects. Uh, so there is a boxed warning on increased risk for thyroid tumors, and that's true of GLP-1s, which I've discussed uh, prior as well. Uh, Acute kidney injury has been reported. Uh, this may be due to dehydration risk. And if you think about it, if a patient is experiencing maybe some adverse effects, stomach upset, maybe they aren't drinking as much as they should be, maybe they do have some vomiting or diarrhea, uh, that risk for acute kidney injury is a little bit higher. Now, in my practice, geriatric patients may be a little more at risk for this. Uh, they tend to run a little bit more dehydrated the way it is and aren't able to maybe uh, bounce back uh, from that as quickly. Um, so I'm definitely going to watch this a little bit closer uh, in a geriatric patient or any patient at risk for uh, acute kidney injury. Uh, other rare things that have been reported, hypersensitivity reactions, pancreatitis, uh, those are the primary things uh, that I'm going to look out for there. Now, monitoring parameters, pretty straightforward. Uh, if we're using for diabetes, A1C, um, in the studies, uh, tirzepatide has reduced A1Cs in the ballpark of two points. So that's bringing a patient down from a nine to a seven. So it's very, very uh, robust benefit in the uh, diabetes studies for sure. Of course, some of the things that you know patients are, are asking, 
you know, what are the long-term adverse effects, things of that nature. And of course, being a new medica- newer medication, we don't have great evidence uh, in patients who've been on this medication for, you know, two years, four years, six years plus. We, we don't have any evidence uh, of what those long-term uh, adverse effects are. So that is always kind of a, a risk versus benefit type of thing where maybe some of the older GLP-1s, we've got a little bit more um, experience with the use of the, the medication. Uh, I have not seen or heard of anything um, come up as far as long-term uh, risks being reported or in the literature at this point, uh, but we are still fairly early with the medication, uh, relatively new in the last year or two here. So A1C, important monitoring parameter, of course, if we're using it for diabetes, and then, of course, weight. You know, we like to target uh, initially for weight management. That 5% weight loss is usually kind of a primary goal. If we can get more than that, great. Um, But obviously, we're going to be monitoring uh, weight if we're using this medication uh, as a you know, dual purpose with diabetes, or uh, if we get that FDA approved indication, if we see this uh, med used more and more for weight management uh, by itself. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for any pharmacist board certification, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. In addition to board certification study materials, we've also got books on drug interactions, drug food interactions, case studies, clinical pearls, lots of different resources that can be helpful for your practice, whether you're a nurse practitioner, a med student, nursing student, uh, lots of real world clinical information in the books that we've put together on Amazon. So uh, go check out all those resources, meded101.com slash store. Wrapping up with drug interactions. So the first thing I always look at, think about with medications is SIP interactions. The drug tirzepatide does not have any SIP interactions. That is a really, really nice thing. So what do I think about? Uh, I think about blood sugar changes. So drugs like corticosteroids can raise blood sugars, kind of counteract any beneficial effects from tirzepatide. Uh, Thiazide diuretics, another example that potentially has been uh, reported to do that. And then, of course, on the flip side, tirzepatide lowers blood sugars, so we've got to pay attention to hypoglycemia. And that risk tends to escalate quickly when we add on uh, insulin and or insulin stimulating drugs. So of course, your you know short acting insulins, rapid acting insulins, long acting insulins, uh, those can all uh, increase that risk potentially. And we've got to pay attention when we're adding a drug like tirzepatide onto a patient taking insulin. And then of course we've got some of the older medications like sulfonylurea, the older oral medications like sulfonylurea, so glipizide, for example. So again, pay attention to that hypoglycemia risk when we're adding, uh, changing, increasing any other diabetes medications with tirzepatide. The GI slowing effect is something I definitely look out for. Um, It can be problematic and really worsen uh, GI upset issues and drugs that slow the gut down or can slow the gut down even further. Um, include some of those an- older anticholinergics, so you know first-generation antihistamines like diphenhydramine, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, and probably we've got a little bit more risk of uh, that issue in our geriatric patient population. So keep in mind, pay attention to patients with diabetic gastroparesis. You know, are those symptoms going to be worsened by drugs uh, in combination with tirzepatide? So that's definitely something I uh, keep an eye out for. And then lastly, I wanted to mention um, DPP-4s and GLP-1 agonists. So of course, we're not going to use tirzepatide with a GLP-1 agonist like semaglutide, liraglutide. Uh, We also would like to avoid using it with DPP-4 inhibitors. Uh, Again, tirzepatide works kind of along the same pathway as a DPP-4 inhibitor. 
I consider it kind of analogous to using an ace and an arb together. It's just not a good idea, not something that's recommended either. So um, definitely avoid use of a drug like citagliptin, the brand name Genuvia, uh, in combination with tirzepatide. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Hopefully, you picked up a few practice pearls. Go sign up for that free top 200 study guide, reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, thank you to pearls.com uh, slash RLP for the free giveaway on the diabetes, uh, ADA diabetes guidelines in 2023. Uh, so go take advantage of that. Support the sponsor. We appreciate uh, Derek, who I've known for a long time. Um, putting that together uh, for any free account that is created over there. If you enjoyed this podcast, found it helpful, please leave a rating review wherever you're listening. Uh, if you want to email me, got suggestions, comments, looking for questions about resources and other opportunities to uh, learn and educate yourself, uh, reach me at mededucation101 at gmail.com. You can also track me down on LinkedIn if you'd like to connect with me there. With that, uh, I'm going to sign off for today, and I thank you guys so much for listening. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.